sort of take a little break from the questions and maybe do a speed round of, I'll throw some topics at you. You tell me if it's overrated or underrated in your point of view. And you can pass if I throw one at you that you really don't want to comment on. But, so let's talk about microlearning. Do you feel like this concept of microlearning that has sort of taken over in, in a lot of LD organizations, is it overrated or underrated? The way we utilize it, underrated. I, I think it's really valuable for us. Really, really valuable. People love it, but they don't have time to go to classes, so they, they like this. Now, there are some micro-learning, micro, you know, some companies that build these things that I think are ridiculous, and they're not really useful. But if you find the ones that are useful, then, you know, who knows? I mean, they're great. So it's all the application. And, they, and we use them for reinforcement a lot of times too, and also for teasing, like to tease somebody about a class they might go to. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's talk about uh, artificial intelligence, AI. If you talk to technology vendors out there, everybody is saying, oh, we've got an AI that will solve all your problems by lunch. And, um, you know, do you feel like this concept of AI learning is overrated or underrated at this point? You know, I've thought a lot about this. It's overrated. I think because of a buzzword and because I have a technology background, software program, I mean, it, artificial intelligence is like a macro of code that a, that a human did, and now the computer's doing it. Um, I always learned when I was a programmer, if you don't program it right, it's not going to work right. So hence why a car runs over somebody. I mean, it's that kind of thing, right? If you're not looking at all the stuff. So I think it's overrated because I think um, it's a buzzword right now, like big data and all these other things. But I do think if it was used right, which I'm not sure that it's possible, this whole idea of the future of learning where the computer can see what your skills are, your background, what's happening in the environment around you, what's on your calendar, what you're going to be doing later today, who's, who are you meeting with? If the computer could say, you know, based on all of that, you need to learn this. If that could happen, that would be amazing. And that would require artificial intelligence. But one thing artificial intelligence doesn't have is empathy. So they can't, it can't really tell some of the things that are going on. Um, so I don't know that that's ever going to happen. I remember Jonathan Levy wrote an article, I think it was in Chief Learning Officer, back in 2002, 3, 4, somewhere in there, about the future of learning. And he described a scenario very much like that. Like I knew who you were, what's on. It still hasn't happened. I saw another article that was written a year ago, same thing, still hasn't happened. So I don't know if it's going to happen. But it would be great. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've got to be up on stage at 7.30 tomorrow morning. Give me some tips on remembering public speaking. Exactly. Like, that would be great if yeah, yeah. artificial intelligence could do that. Um, but you're right. It's sort of it's, it's missing that element of the, interact, the, the insight that comes from interaction with people. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit about that in the panel this morning. Um, you know, the, the, what is the in-person experience? For yes. You? That's where these insights, the back and forth that you can't do through technology or it's more difficult to do through technology. That definitely doesn't come through. You know, it does, it doesn't skill, read, yeah, and it doesn't read body language. You know, it doesn't see that question on your face when that kind of stuff. And I was telling Emily this morning that we have Alexa at our house, and during the Super Bowl, I was asking her what the score was, and she's like, "I cannot answer that question. I do not know. I do not understand, or whatever it is." She says, "I kept going. You know, the NFL. She didn't know that. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs. That's my team. She didn't know that." <laughs> So it's, it's how you program it, and it, it's whether or not it's going to work. Yeah. All right. Um, one more topic for overrated and underrated. The concept of ROI, return on investment of learning. Do you feel that's overrated or underrated? Okay. So uh, Mike's probably going to shoot me, but I would say overrated. <laughs> and the reason why is because I have so, so often I'll have a business leader say, well, if you want us to do this program, what's the return on investment? And I'm like, and I have a quality background from my ears at Xerox, and I'd be like, well, what's going to happen if you don't do it? And it's the non-compliance cost. What we like to look at is the business impact, rather than, and it, which is hard, which you can actually measure the business impact. It's harder to measure the return on investment because there's so many other dynamics that you're not quite sure if you're actually getting that. So it's a great buzzword, and people like to talk about it. But honestly, we focus a lot more on business impact. Okay, great. So last question before I want to invite Noreen up here uh, is career advice that you have. So best career advice that you received that you think is applicable to the folks in this audience? Well, I think the, the one I mentioned earlier about uh, not everyone's as smart as, I mean, L&D people, come on, we're lifetime learners, right? 
we are always learning and we're always looking at stuff. Not everybody is. It just seems natural that everybody should want to Everybody this. should know this, they should do this. And so the best career advice I had was that you need to take a step back and, and put yourself in the shoes of the individual and look at things from their perspective instead of your perspective. So often we find, so we have a lot of customers that bring their training to us and we're supposed to deliver it or we can convince that it needs to be improved, which it usually does. But they come and they bring, because contact centers, call centers, customer care in any company is usually the last one to get any training budget, training money. So they have these SMEs come in and say, here's everything you need to know to do this. And um, it's just we find that they're not looking at from the from the learner oops, from the learner's perspective. They're not taking a step back and saying, how can I help this person do A, B, C, and D, which is what they need to do for their job. They're saying they need to know blah 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 all these things. So that was the best career advice was really to take that step back and not act like you're the one who knows everything because maybe you had all this experience. It doesn't work that way. They aren't. They aren't you. Yeah, and it resonates with something somebody said in the panel earlier this morning about being people-centric first. It's like, yes, we have all this technical ability, we have this business, we are the CLOs are sort of that intersection between where the organization wants to be and needs the head and the people strategy behind it. Yeah. But you got to have, you can't forget the people side of it when you're focusing on understanding your business. And exactly, you can't. Once you do, you're out of the job. Yeah.